This is the first in a two-part video series where I discuss High Dynamic Range Imaging, or HDRI. In this first video, I'll be showing you how you can take your own 360-degree photographs and then use them to generate 360-degree High Dynamic Range images. Blender allows you to add a 360-degree image as an environment texture to the background. When this 360-degree image is also an HDR image, then it can be used as a light source, which can give you lighting that is similar to real-world environments. In the next video, I'll show you how to use these images to light your Blender scenes. This is an example. The robot, hammer, reflective ball, and small table are all Blender objects that are being illuminated by an HDR image. The background photo was taken in the same environment that the HDR image was generated from. As you can see, the lighting of the Blender objects looks natural for this environment. In addition, there are some nice reflections in the Blender objects. In this video, I'll be using the Ricoh Theta SC camera to take 360 degree photographs. I researched multiple cameras and I bought the Ricoh Theta SC because with a firmware upgrade, it supports multi-bracket shooting and I thought that it was reasonably priced for its capabilities. If you follow the link that I placed in the video description, then you can see the current price and learn more about this camera. But I need to make the disclosure that as an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. This camera has lenses on both sides and it stitches both images together to create a single 360 degree image. This is a photo that I took with the camera. If you use a viewer that supports 360 degree photos, then you can move around the image. By taking multiple photos at different exposure levels, which is called image bracketing or multi-bracket shooting, and then using a software application to merge the photos together, then you can get a high dynamic range image. So what is a high dynamic range image? In the context of what we're doing in this video, it means an image of a scene that contains a range of brightness values that is close to what was present in the real world scene. When the dynamic range of a scene exceeds a camera's ability to capture the whole brightness range, then either the brightest area will be washed out or the dark areas will be too dark to make out much detail. But if you merge two or more images taken at different exposure levels, then you can get a high dynamic range image. There are two common desired outcomes for merging these images together. The first is called tone mapping, which is popular with photographers, but it is not what we're concerned with in this video. An example of tone mapping is taking this part of this image and combining it with this part of this image to produce this image. This produces a nice visual result that looks good on a computer monitor, but it won't work well for lighting a blender scene. What we're interested in doing is merging these images together to get an image that contains a range of brightness values that is close to what was present in the real world scene. This HDR image, which is useful for lighting a Blender scene, may not look good on your computer monitor. That's because an HDR image can contain brightness levels that are beyond what your monitor is capable of displaying. To see this, here is an HDR image. The white area here looks like it's washed out, but it actually contains a bright blue sky that is too bright for the monitor to display. But I'll use GIMP, which is free image manipulation software, to lower the exposure of the image. Now you can see the blue sky. This blue sky color information was there all along, but it was too bright for the monitor to display. However, Blender can use these bright levels to produce some very nice lighting. When you create an HDR image, you don't save it in file formats like JPEG. Instead, you need to use file formats that can store a very wide range of brightness values. Two popular file formats are OpenEXR, which has an EXR file extension, and Radiance RGBE, which has an HDR extension. To use the Ricoh Theta SC to produce high dynamic range images, you also need the following. The Ricoh Theta SC computer application. This application runs on your PC, and among other things, it can be used to update the camera's firmware. The camera firmware needs to be a newer version that supports multi-bracket shooting. You need a smartphone with GPS capabilities along with the Ricoh Theta app to control the camera for capturing multiple exposures using multi-bracket shooting. You need a tripod to hold the camera still for multi-bracket shooting. 
And you need a software application to merge the multi-bracketed photos together. I've read that Photoshop CC can be used, but I've never tried it myself. I use software called Easy HDR. It's not free, but it seemed like a good value to me. Once you've updated the camera's firmware and installed the Ricoh Theta app on your smartphone, you're ready to connect your smartphone to the camera. Your smartphone connects to the Theta SC by using Wi-Fi. This connection should be made before starting the app. To do this, turn the camera on and then press the wireless button. The wireless lamp on the front should flash. Then go to the Wi-Fi settings on your phone and look for a network name that starts with Theta. For example, it might look something like this. Connect to this network. When prompted for a password, enter the number portion of the network name, not the letters. This number is also printed on the bottom of the camera. With my phone, I only needed to enter the password the first time that I connected. Once the connection is made, the wireless lamp on the front stops flashing and it's turned on. Now that the phone has a Wi-Fi connection to the camera, you can open the app. I've noticed, however, that sometimes when I open the app too quickly after connecting to the Wi-Fi, then the app will not be able to communicate with the camera. So this is the procedure that I follow. I start by making sure that the app is closed. Then I turn on the camera and verify that the wireless lamp is flashing. Then from my smartphone, I connect to the Theta Wi-Fi network. Then I wait at least 20 seconds and then start the app. Once the app is started, you may see this screen or this screen. If you see this screen, then press this button. If you see this screen, then make sure that Still Image is selected. Then click the Settings button. For the shooting method, select Multi-Bracket Shooting. When you jump out of settings, you should see a screen like this. Now you can enter multiple exposure settings. I use an ISO value of 100 for all of the exposures, and I set the white balance based on the environment. On sunny days, 5500 has worked well for me. When I took nighttime photos under a street lamp, I used 3300. The shutter speed is what I use to get a wide range of exposures. For daylight photos, the first shutter speed that I use is the fastest shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second. The second speed that I use is half, so it would be 1 4,000th of a second, then 1 2,000th, and so on. If I can't cut it in half exactly, then I just choose something close. For nighttime photos, I still start with 1 8,000th of a second, but then I use a fourth of the speed instead of half. So the next speed after 1 8,000th would be 1 2,000th, followed by 1 500th, and so on. I put the shutter speeds that I used in the video description. When you're ready to take the pictures, press this button and the camera will take all of the photos that we specified. After I'm finished taking the 360 degree photos, I move the tripod out of the way and use my smartphone to take pictures of the area where the tripod was standing. I use these pictures for exposure compensation and sometimes as a background for my blender scene. I'll be showing you this in the next video. After the 360 degree photos have been taken and they've been transferred to a computer, then they can be merged together to make an HDR image. I've read that Photoshop CC can be used to merge the photos together. I've never tried it, but if you have this software, then you may want to give it a try. The software that I use is called Easy HDR, and I'm very pleased with it. It's not free software, but it seems reasonably priced to me. I put a link to it in the video description. To use it, you can just drag your bracketed images into it. But first I look at the range of exposures that I have. This darkest image is not completely black, so I definitely want to use that one. As for the bright images, I look at the darkest portions of the image to see if it contains enough detail. I don't think that I will get any additional detail with a brighter photo, and so I'll use this one for the brightest photo in the range. So I'll select these photos and drag them into Easy HDR. After adding the photos, the Generate HDR window appears. I'll show you the settings that I use. I don't use lens correction, so I make sure that automatic is not selected. Since I used a tripod, the photos are already aligned well, so I make sure that automatic alignment is not selected. The method should be set to true HDR. Since my photos are 360 degree images, I add a check mark next to 360. 
A check mark also needs to be added next to Save Output HDR to File. I usually use the file name and file location that the software generates, but you can change it if you want. Now you just need to click the Generate HDR button. The new HDR image should now be located in the specified directory. After generating the HDR image, the Easy HDR software then transitions to tone mapping. This software does a nice job with tone mapping, but I don't need that functionality for this video. I'm only interested in the HDR image that was just generated. This new HDR image can now be used to light a blender scene. I generated three 360 degree HDR images. One of them is a nighttime scene with a street light. Another one is a shaded area in a gazebo. The last one is outside in bright sunlight. In the next video, I'll demonstrate how to use these three HDR images to light some blender scenes. One difficult lighting situation to photograph is when the scene includes a direct view of the sun. Even when the camera is set to the fastest shutter speed of 1 8,000th of a second, the image will be saturated or clipped at the location of the sun. To capture the full dynamic range of this type of scene, you need a way to capture the image of the sun without clipping. It's common for photographers to use dark neutral density filters or a solar filter in front of their lens to reduce the brightness. However, I'm not aware of a solar filter that fits this type of camera which takes 360 degree photos. So when the camera has direct view of the sun, I don't worry about trying to capture the full dynamic range. Instead, I use Blender to add a sun light source. I'll show you some tips for doing this in the next video. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.